What is going on? You're listening to episode 199 of the Nintendo Powercast. I'm your host, N64 Josh, and uh, I got a player too, Steve from Engaged Family Gaming. What is up, my guy? How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing, doing very well. Guys, I'm going to give you a heads up right now. For some reason, Discord does not want to connect very well, so you may hear a little bit of cutout here and there, but I'm just giving you the heads up now, all right? That may, that may end up happening, so uh, I do apologize, but that's just the nature of the beast on the internet. So, that we, music we you just We are at heard, the whim of the internet, that's we, true. We really are, yeah. And we're 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 across the uh, United States from each other, so you know, also also great. Uh, that music you just heard from On Being Human. You can check them out on Spotify and YouTube. This is an unofficial Nintendo podcast, and if you'd like to get yourself a free book from Audible, go to audibletrial.com/npc. Pick up something awesome like Blood, Sweat, and Pixels or Ready Player One. The chair I'm sitting in is from OPC. Go to n64josh.com/opc to automatically save ten dollars at checkout. If you would like to help support the content I create, you can go to patreon.com slash n64josh. And lastly, if you'd like to get my book, Another Castle, you can even get the first chapter for free. Go to n64josh.com slash another castle. And I still, have the, I still have the sale going on. If you use coupon code NPCFAM, you save 20%. With that, let's jump to the announcements. Hey! Listen. All right. Well, we're doing a giveaway right now. If you go to n64josh.com slash giveaway, you can be entered to win a $50 <laughs> eShop card from myself and Captain Dangerous. All right. So just n64josh.com slash giveaway. And if you'd like to stay up to date with my streaming schedule, our community game nights, tournaments, all that stuff, n64josh.com slash calendar. All right. With that, we're going to jump on over to what we've been playing. Okay, so Steve, been been doing any gaming this last week? Um, I actually have been, which is weird. Um, I, it's been a rough couple of weeks coming home from PAX East. Um, but I did uh, get a chance to play um, most recently on my Switch. I've been playing a little bit of Steam World Quest. Oh, nice. I may not review it, but I can tell you that I have been playing it. Okay, and it sure is a Steam World game. <laughs> um, that you may, if you like Steam World games, then you know it's a habit. That you know, if you're in a habit of buying those games, then it might not necessarily be time to kick that habit. But you know, what do you what do you think of the Steam World games? Where where do you come down on those? Uh, they have not really. They have not done a whole lot for me. But I don't know that I've given them a, a fair a fair chance either. You know, so the Steam World Dig Two, for some reason, the the <laughs> that art style of games, it kind of uh, it just doesn't sit well with me. I would much rather see pixels than the the kind of the weird flash looking. <laughs> like I don't even know how to explain it really, but I uh, okay. it almost looks like cutout dolls that have arms that move. You know what I mean? So I feel like the yeah. animation is a little bit cheap, and I it uh, it it's it's not my favorite. That being said. What I did play of Steam World Dig Two, the gameplay was was solid, and you know that kind of stuff. It's just, uh, well, anybody that knows knows I don't uh, play games for a very long period of time. I pretty much do a preview of them and then and then move on. So, <laughs> such is the life of a content creator. Um, I have a I have a similar issue. Um, what I uh, so I have been playing that. Um, it comes out on the 25th, so next week. So we'll be you'll be hearing lots about it. Um, and if you want to hear me shout about it, you know we'll talk about where all my channels are later on. Oh yeah, um, sure. A game that I can talk about now. This have you heard of a game called Panzer Paladin? I haven't. Okay, so this is a game I've been um, shouting about this game ever since I played it at PAX East. Um, let me paint a picture for you. Oh, I'm this ready. is the thing I, I, I try and do. I'm going to paint a picture. Do you remember Blaster Master? Oh, yeah. Okay, so picture Blaster Master, where instead of a tank, you have a Gundam wing. Okay, I like Does it. Does that already. sound cool? Yeah, I'm down. Okay, so it's basically that. Um, and that's like, the, a, that's like a mech, right? Because I'm not really into yeah, cartoons yeah, all mech. that much. So. It's a big old mech thing. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, but... Instead of guns, you actually fight with melee weapons. 
Um, and the combat is very similar to Legend of Zelda 2 in that the monsters will come at you and they have shields and they'll block up and they'll block down. Um, and you obviously have to attack them in the right way. Um, the weapons will actually break, um, but as they're about to break, you can kind of sacrifice them to cast magic spells that do all sorts of wacky stuff. Um, this is a, it's a, it's a pixel art game. Um, so I know you said you like some good pixel art. Oh, yeah. This is really cool pixel art. Um, I, it is coming out by the end of this year. Uh, or the beginning of next year. It's from the same folks that did Flint Hook. Do you remember that one? Yep. Yep. I own it. So it's by I, those have, folks. I haven't played it. All right. <laughs> so um, you played it for, you know, an hour and probably nope, had to move it's, on. I, I got it from Limited Run Games and I never even opened it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, at least the box looks nice. Yeah. Um, this is another one where, you know, very similar art style in that um, black backgrounds, cool foregrounds, uh, the sprite animations are top notch. Um, I really dig it. Um, it was my game of the show, no question, coming out of PAX East. Um, so everybody's got to keep their eyes on Panzer Paladin. So it's the it, name is kind of stupid, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, no, I get it, I get it. So I, I there was some game recently. The guy was like, all the names are taken. Like I can't remember which which indie game it was, but that's <laughs> he's like, I can't. It's the best I could do. The uh, so it sounds like a mix of of Zelda two and Breath of the Wild with your weapons breaking. Like kinda. I mean, the I think the Breath of the Wild. I don't want to give it all the credit for weapon degradation, although. Like, if you don't like weapon degradation because of Breath of the Wild, then that might kind of make uh, Panzer Paladin uh, a bit of a question mark. Um, but there's tons of weapons. And if you have no weapon, it's not like you're helpless because you are a giant robot. You just rocket punch enemies oh. as opposed to hitting them with giant swords. Cool. So, like, I really, you know, I, at one point I lost all of my weapons because I threw them or sacrificed them to cast magic spells. And then I just punched a robot to death. So I was fine. Gotcha. Gotcha. I like it. I like it. Well, this past week, I checked out four indie titles, guys. The first was uh, Android Attack Cactus Plus. It's been out for a little bit, mm -hmm. but this game really, really impressed me. Like the uh, the little bit of time I did spend with it, the 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 animation was cool. The story was engaging. It was it was quirky. It felt like it really had like a Saturday morning cartoon vibe to it. And uh, twin stick shooter, which I'm all about, and I've yet to find one that I really really liked on the Switch. And I think I finally found one with uh, Android Attack Cactus Plus. So that's one I will say worth checking out. Um, the next one, which was also kind of a uh, it's 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 kind of a twin stick shooter it's another hd zombie defense um and uh uh the you basically it's 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 kind of like a tower defense game but not not completely you you are basically just stuck in this room and there are zombies coming at you you have a gun so if you if you hold down the, the right trigger, you fire and then you aim with your right stick and you run around with your left stick. So that's where it is. It's kind of twin stick shooter esque. Right. The the thing is, after each round, you get cash and you can you build up your defenses. You can get turrets and then put guns on the turrets and um, put up bar like barricades, things like that. And this has uh, it has online. It has a, a, a death match. And it like overall was I was I was pretty impressed with it. If you're if you're looking for, you know, you want to get you want to get three other people together and uh, kind of do some like I said, it's kind of like it, it's one of those games. It's just wave after wave and you can eventually like build up your defenses and it, and it, and it can be it can be pretty fun. It's just a matter of okay. getting to that point because I, uh, I, I ended I, the the few games I got into where it was like, oh, there's a lot going on here. I would then get kicked out. So you do want to find your friends <laughs> to play with because I'm not sure how 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 good the randoms are. The death match is interesting because you've got zombies trying to attack both of you, and you're trying to shoot each other at the same time. And there's all kinds of different guns. You've got you've got machine guns. You've got like um, shotguns. You have guns that that shoot like plasma bullets i don't even really know you flamethrowers like a lot of options a lot of options so sure yeah so sounds good to me yeah and uh that one uh another 
uh, another zombie defense HD is the actual title. I think I, I think I mixed it up the last time. So, um, worth checking out. Uh, the next one is war theater, which I was, I had no clue what this game was. I had just, okay. I just received a key for it and was like, okay, I'll check it out. It's very much like a uh, war groove or, you know, a fire emblem. It's kind of that style of game. And what was, what was crazy is while I was, while I was doing the first look, we were doing it live and everything. Uh, a lot of people in chat were like, wow, this looks really cool. This looks really cool because you kind of start off and you've got um, you've got the map, right? And you you go and take over factories and then you can immediately start building different units and you almost have to do that. And that's where I that's where I made my my first mistake because I was I was kind of exploring versus like getting my army built up. And a, a lot of it was due to the fact that I just uh, I, I one I don't play a lot of games like that. And then two just being a novice, um, I you know, I, I just made some mistakes, but after getting into it a little further and like, you know, okay, you could get, get your, get your mechs getting built, that kind of stuff. Um, and what's interesting is the, uh, the battles don't take place like just on the, like basically the entire scene changes when you do the battle and you see everything kind of like almost like a, like 2d side scroller kind of stuff. Now you're not controlling anything. They just, you know, it's just turn-based they attack you attack that kind of stuff and uh so overall um pretty pretty impressed by it i was like i i really had no clue going into it now it does have that art style that i mentioned kind of that steam world dig uh art style a little bit that i'm not a huge fan of but i'm not gonna i'm not going to uh I'm not going to knock a game just because I don't necessarily love the way it looks, right? The the gameplay was there. There was some there was some cool story elements, and uh, this also had um, quite a bit of content as far as like you have a campaign, you have multiplayer. I I believe, but don't quote me because I'd have to I have to double check. But I believe there was even online, and so um, that was War Theater worth worth checking out. Okay, the last one is a little puzzle game called Box Align, which uh surprisingly very very relaxing yet pretty fun and uh you know the the developer just kind of messaged me out of the blue and was like hey would you check this out and and really just give your honest opinion like i ended up i ended up you know playing it on stream watching people go crazy watching me play a puzzle game and then uh ended up playing it playing it in bed kind of um handed the switch over to my wife was like hey you need to check this out because i know how much you love puzzle games and she was like oh this is this is actually pretty cool what you're trying to do is you've, you've got shapes that you are trying to make uh you've got they're basically cubes or boxes and you're trying to get three in a row and you only have x amount of moves like you have to move everything perfectly otherwise it starts over it starts the puzzle over and so if things are stacked and they're going to be able to fall in place or whatever the case is and uh it seems to be that there's a fair amount of puzzles and um, they seem pretty good, so uh, box line is another one that I would that I would say maybe uh, maybe worth checking out. So um, with that, I think we're gonna move right on over into the news. So yesterday was kind of a sad day if you were on Twitter because we got to see Reggie pass the torch. To Doug Bowser, Reggie has retired uh, as the president of Nintendo of America, and uh, he, he, I, I, as far as I know, I don't even think he had a Twitter up until like yesterday or something. He did not, <laughs> at least not one that we know about. Yeah, and I'm like, he's verified and everything. Look at this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so he... Uh, he just started tweeting all kinds of pictures like of his, he was packing up his office. He was uh, taking some pictures with Doug um, that were pretty funny because like they were both like it looked like they were both holding like a whiteboard or something. And there was I think they were blank. And then people started filling in like the memes. for him. <laughs> and so there was uh, there was. But there's also you can see a lot of uh, a lot of gifts of people crying and you know people people being upset. So did you did you get to see a lot of these a lot of these photos and whatnot? I did, and you know I mean uh, the internet being what it is, I think 
I'm happy that most of it was positive. Um, been a lot of cynical folks living on the internet in the last forever. Um, so I'm just really happy for him. You know, like he's leaving. He gets to go spend time with his family. He's not gone. Obviously, he's going to come back and run some games, something somewhere eventually. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I saw some of the stuff, you know, uh, a lot of my body is ready for retirement jokes. Um, of course. Which, uh, same is what I said to all those. I was like, same. My body's definitely ready for retirement. Yeah. Just yeah. not quite as uh, ready to do so financially as the president of Nintendo. <laughs> right, right. Right. So uh, probably one of the one of the coolest pictures was him in his office and he was saying he was going to leave the master sword behind. Right. And so the, the thing that I just want to let everybody know is that the amiibo that were in his office were still in their packaging the way they should be. I just want to I just want to get that out there. Oh, so. you're one of them. Oh, yeah, we fight about, let's yeah, fight about this. Absolutely. I'm one of um, them. These so. are these are toys, <laughs> sir. Well, um. In their packaging, they're expensive toys. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I mean, ultimately, I, mean, there's really, I, I don't really have much in this game, um, but all our amiibos are out of the box. <laughs> the chat is saying, don't get Josh started on his amiibo prison. So, um, any amiibo that I have open, I have a duplicate of. So, that's that way there's one. There's one in the one in the closet behind me in his happy little warm plastic cardboard home, not jail. And uh, they call me the amiibo warden, basically. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, if Toy Story were real, you're I know, a bad person. I know, I know. Hey, I I'm okay with it though. I've accepted right. my my role as in life. As long as you're happy. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, that's what matters to me. Okay, good, good. That's good. <laughs> So, anyway, it was it, it was cool to see, and then of course, uh, Doug Bowser takes to uh, takes to Twitter and posts a photo of uh, Bowser Jr. sitting at the desk, and I was just like, I'm shook. I don't, you know, I I feel like I I, I don't know. I don't. Is Bowser pulling a fast one on us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even his Twitter handle is the true Bowser. Right. So, <laughs> so he, he's a marketing guy. I mean, that's the thing we have to remember. He came through and has been, you know, one of the VPs of marketing. Yeah. Um, so he knows what he has, mm -hmm. you know, his name is Bowser. He yep. knows that that holds brand power. Um, so I would be, sh I would be stunned if, uh, we don't see a lot of stuff like that. Oh, um, all the stuffed animals in that photo were just Bowser, just Koopa kids. I was like, yep. where's the brothers, you know, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, a, he's going to be a heel. I mean, that's the thing where I, and, and I, and I appreciate that he's, <laughs> he's going to, he's going to love Bowser because that's his name. Um, and so we've, we've had a face, um, president of Nintendo America for a long time. So now we're going to have the reign of the, of the heel and it'll be fine. Yeah, I hope at E3 he comes out in full Bowser costume and he's just like, where's the princess? <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Because, I mean, exactly. you know, the thing with Nintendo and E3, it's always been, well, as of recent anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's the memes that come out of it, right? I mean, yeah. Reggie and uh, Awada and all the stuff that just, you know, the puppets and just, just everything. Like, yep. It's yeah. So so hopefully the the tradition um, uh, carries over. You know, he sounds like he's ready to do that. Yeah. Um, like I said, he's a marketing guy. He knows full well that his last name is Bowser, so he has to use it. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna weaponize that. I like it. I like it. So, Marvel <laughs> Ultimate Alliance three gets a release date of seven nine. Is this a is this a day one purchase for you? Uh, yeah, it's a day zero purchase. I'd buy it now if I could. Right. Okay. Um, this feels like the, um, for sake of correction, I think it's the 19th, not the 9th. Oh, it may be. Yeah, it, it may be. It actually, I'll get confirmation. Nope, it is. Um, it is. Because I thought okay. it, I actually thought it was, I thought it was June 19th when I first uh, saw it. But when I typed it in my notes, I forgot the one here. So, yeah, you are correct. Yeah. It is uh, um, July 19th. So, it feels like the perfect summer vacation game. You know, oh, multiplayer. Yeah. You know, couch co-op, 
It's going to be super hot on the East Coast because hashtag climate change. My kids are going to be, you know, sitting on the couch um, and I'm going to play with them. Um, and Cyclops is in it, I think, because there's X-Men. You can't have X-Men without Cyclops. Right. So we're going to play. Um, and I can't wait to shoot dudes with with eyeball lasers. Um, it just I loved the, the Ultimate Alliance games back in the day. It's been 10 years. Mm-hmm. which really caught me off guard when they were uh, press releasing about it today. Um, yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. Even if it's bad, it's still going to be good. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous because I really love the first Ultimate Alliance. The second one, I didn't play because I don't remember what I was playing when it came out. But it just, it, it, I it did come out at a weird time. Yeah, I don't remember what what I was into at the time. Maybe a Halo game or something. And, uh, but I loved, loved, loved the first one. The the thing that has me um, reluctant to get like overly excited is Team Ninja's track record is kind of is kind of hit or miss, you know. Sure. So, uh, but hopefully, hopefully they have the right the right people in place to make sure that this uh, this is a, a polished experience because the potential is there, right? You've got you've got hundreds. I don't know how many characters are going to be in the game exactly, but I know the the. I mean, I remember running around as like, at the time for the first Marvel Ultimate Alliance, some of the characters seemed even a little bit obscure, like, you know, uh, Loki and Luke Cage and, and characters that weren't like in the forefront of mm-hmm. uh, of everything Marvel, right? And so it, it was, uh, it, it was kind of cool because it actually got me like, Oh, who is this? Who is this? You know, I'd get on get on Google and find out like, okay, oh, this is who this person is. Get a little backstory, yeah. things like that, right? And so, but one of the things that was so great about it is like, hey, you pick the character you like, and then you um, not only level them up and unlock more powers and abilities, things like that, but they also had multiple costumes and things like yep. it was. It was just it was really a um, kind of a complete package for a Marvel game. Uh, back in the day and so there's there's definitely the potential here and uh and i really hope it goes well because i want to see nintendo possibly resurrect other uh uh series that have kind of fallen to the wayside or that we haven't heard anything about and so what i want to do um i'm going to post the question guys on the subreddit uh the you can go to n64josh.com slash r it'll take you right to the subreddit i want to hear from you guys what other games you would like to see nintendo um resurrect i'll have that question up tonight before the show goes out um uh to the to itunes and whatnot but i want to know what what and then i'm actually going to put a post together because i have a handful of uh i have a handful of games that i that i would like to uh to uh see come back as well so um and I'll put you on the spot, Steve. Any particular series that you think would be cool if Nintendo brought back? Um, absolutely. Uh, I have a few. With that said, there's a question in the chat. Somebody was asking about online or couch co-op. It is both. Oh, for uh, Marvel Just to Ultimate answer Alliance. that for uh, Nightcrawler 724. Nice. And Nightcrawler's in the game. It, that, in case there you that go. mattered to them. I'm taking a <laughs> shot. Um, so uh, to answer that, I was actually thinking about that this morning. I don't know why it hit me. Um Here's what I think. Um, I want to know why Super Mario Strikers is not being remade right now. Um, it's Super Mario Strikers, Wii game, mm-hmm. Mario Soccer. Um, I really feel like that's an easy slam dunk. Um, and I, I can't come up with the appropriate soccer pun. <laughs> but like, it feels like just easy money yeah. if they do it right. Um it, it could kind of resurrect that franchise. It was well, it was well liked. Um, I think it just kind of got buried because the switch was weird or not the switch. The, uh, the Wii was weird, you know, um, just the way that the game lineup came through, mm-hmm. but it's well liked. Um, and the, the, there really isn't a better system uh, for multiplayer right now. And I could totally imagine, you know, link up a bunch of switches and run around and play some goofy soccer um, I, so that's my pick, um, either, you know, the soccer or super Mario sluggers, the baseball game. Yep. Um, I don't know if it's actually called that, but the baseball one, um, it's more Mario sports. 
I think is really what I'm coming from. Yeah, no, it's great. And I mean, the uh, the 3DS got to see that Mario Sports All-Stars that had soccer, baseball, golf, yeah. tennis, and horseback, right? Like horse racing, right? And we've seen, we've seen tennis. I've seen, like, I feel like it's a, like it's a 50-50 split between people that want golf or that want uh, soccer next, you know? And I, I would, like, I recently picked up, uh, like, the GameCube soccer, baseball, golf, and the the Wii uh, soccer and, and baseball. Yeah. And really, really, really enjoyed them. Like they're, sure. they're such, they're such great games. And so, and I, I mean, and I love, I, I, I love aces. I think aces was, was well done. There were a few missteps with, uh, um, with the online right off the bat, but they're continuing to support that game. And so, yep. um, the, uh, the biggest question I have is like, is when is this game going to come out? When would they, when would they launch a sports title? Because this year already seems so full. <laughs> Well, you know? clearly not now, um, because I'm pretty sure all their teams are busy. Um, but I, 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 and some of the, your uh, folks in the chat are suggesting it too. Like, I think a remaster of the, you know, without even having to dedicate a huge amount of um, work to it, you know, find a, a team that does ports um, and just do a, a, you know, do a port of the Wii games. Um, I think they would be perfect for a late spring, early summer in North America. Um, I, I What I would think is this is one of those games that you want to release early enough in the year so that um, it is, you know, you've got the, the hardcore fans are gathered and, you know, they, they've bought what they're going to buy. Um, and then you really pitch it like with digital sales or something like that in the holidays because the sports game like Strikers, for example, is a perfect like oh you just bought a new switch grab some strikers um and i think it's especially relevant because people are going to start buying multiple switches i don't know if you're a multi-switch household we are mm -hmm. as of this holiday um and i think that's only going to get more common especially now that pokemon and animal crossing are basically going to force it in every household in the world mm -hmm. um because who really wants to share a switch to play animal crossing nobody not this household yeah nope. um so the, so the ability for them to say, hey, we know you just bought your new your second switch. Uh, how about this cool multiplayer game? Do you want to play soccer? And I think Nintendo fans remember those games um, as evidenced by your uh, your fans in the chat. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's been long enough that they could market that. And it's, even though it's a port, it's basically a brand new game. And I, I talk to parents all the time. I am certain that they would go bananas for it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, uh, I agree. I agree. Let's. Uh, I, I was. I personally, I was hoping that we were going to see these sports titles once a year, right? That like get, Same. get tennis Same. to roll out, get golf to roll out, get soccer to roll out, and get baseball to roll out, and then move on to basketball, hockey, you know, cricket, I, whatever. <laughs> hockey, I think, is quietly. I, I think basketball is probably. You know, I, I think basketball has its issues um, because I mean I played the 3DS game. I didn't particularly care for the for the basketball, um, but I think hockey. Like, if, if they just took the shell that was NHL '97 and just palette swapped and put in like plumbers and turtles and stupid stuff, mm -hmm. um, that would sell. But just just a just I, I would play it. I would play it. It would sell great. Um, but it needs to be arcade hockey. Just, you know, just take 97 and maybe take the fighting out. So, so. Or leave it in. So, yeah. Right. I was going to say, then why does, why don't we just take Blitz like 99 and, and pallet swap with the, the plumber and everything too? <laughs> I would, you say that, you laugh, you laugh, but you and I are sponsoring a multiplayer <laughs> tournament of that and it's not even out yet like i mean my god you know yeah. imagine like seven on seven football you're playing a bunch of goombas oh it'd be amazing um, i mean i'd do i'd do it i and that, the thing with hockey is that and i guess that's probably part of the issue is they do better with things like golf and tennis because those are games where you can play as one personality whereas you, know, you play football or 
you know, if you're playing five on five basketball, I mean, it gets a little repetitive. Um, kind of like that, that new Power Rangers fighting game they put out. It's like, why make a 3v3 fighting game when there's only nine characters? It's like eventually it gets kind of, um, you know, repetitive, but they can figure it out. Nintendo's smart. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many racers are there in Mario Kart? Like a billion. Yeah. Like, you know, and I would absolutely play uh, basketball where I could have Mario throw an alley oop to Link. I mean, who wouldn't? Who doesn't yeah. want that? Right. Just we'll just we'll just smashify everything. We'll just smashify every sports game. So you know, get Kirby in there. Get it, like just 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 bring right. the game. Absolutely. All here. I, yeah. I mean, they should do that with Mario Kart anyway. Oh, just I make it Nintendo Kart. I'm all about just, it. I'm all about it. Give us some give us some Dreamland levels. Give us some Metroid absolutely. levels. Give us some Star Fox levels. Just let's keep it going. You know? Yeah. Just send it to let's. <laughs> at Nintendo, th these ideas are free. Yeah. Right. After these ones, you got to pay us. Yeah. Right. Right. So okay. Well, the last thing I want to hit on is uh, uh, Labo VR. Were you able to uh, pick it up, and try it out? I did not, only because we've been uh, a bit busy. And you know what? My kids really don't really care for the Labo stuff. Okay. Which is weird. Yeah. Interesting. So here's what's funny. All the other Labo kits. Uh, the first one, my daughter helped me put together. We did. Uh, we did the house. Uh, my son actually built the piano by himself. Took him six hours, and uh, and I think we did. A, a, I don't even remember what the other the other one was. But we, you know, so we built everything, and then it never got touched again. And then um, yep. I told her about the uh, you know the vehicle one, and she was so excited. And every time I asked her if she wanted to put it together, she didn't. So it's never been opened. It's still sitting in the box. And so the VR, I was like, okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get the uh, the starter kit, and then when the full kit goes on sale, like these last ones just did for sixty dollars off, that's when I'll pick up the uh, the, yeah. the rest of it. But I wanted to at least get you know go hands on with the with the VR. So here's what's funny: I put the thing together, I start messing with it, then and I, I put it together down in the living room on purpose because I wanted to see if it would pique anybody else's interest. And uh, well, guess what? They all played it more than I did. <laughs> My wife, uh, both my daughters, and what's funny is they're sitting on the couch, like trying to spin 360 so they can see everything that's going on. Yep. Here's what I will say: make sure that you you give your screen a good wipe down, right? Because any any little hairs or any dust or anything like that is is really magnified with the uh, with with the VR. So make sure to oh, get, that, get that screen nice and nice and clean, and. Uh, oh, I mean, overall, I was impressed. I was impressed. Now, I couldn't sit and do it for a, for a super long time. I could feel a headache coming on, right? Like that was okay. just like I just I just want to you know be honest there. So I messed with it for a little bit and then was like, okay, yeah, you guys try it. They didn't they didn't complain about that whatsoever. And uh, there's there's interesting little mini games. And I mean, for me, it's it's kind of my uh, kind of my first experience even messing with VR. Other than maybe some stuff way back when, when it was just, you know, completely terrible. And uh, I'm really excited to, uh, the main reason I wanted to check it out was for Breath of the Wild and for, uh, and for Odyssey. And, and who knows what else. Um, I saw um, Andre from, from Game Explain tweeted out that uh, uh, Thumper, the, it doesn't have any plans to support VR, but they haven't shot down the idea, I guess. And that seems like a great game for that uh uh, for VR, yeah. and then who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe Mario Kart, maybe not. You know, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But, uh, uh, but overall, I feel like this is probably the best Labo kit out of out of all of them. And I like the way that you could you can just purchase uh, like the starter kit for half the price, and kind of get you know get your get your feet wet see if it's see if it's for you I, I enjoy i enjoy putting the labo stuff together i think it's i think it's kind of fun i like the way they've done the the um the step by step the way they walk you through it just the different sounds things like that and so um uh overall i'm pretty i'm pretty impressed and i think i think there's going to be a lot of potential here and i'm <laughs> i'll be perfectly honest animal crossing with vr would 
actually be pretty awesome. <laughs> Honestly, I, I mean, I think that that's uh, probably a foregone conclusion. Really, um, uh, having not picked it up, I mean, I'm sure we will um, eventually, just because I, I think I have a responsibility to do so to my audience. However, um, I think the way they split the kit up is the real strength. Um, because the $80 for the full kits is a big ask, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the idea of having it split up so you can get a, you know, a, like a, 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 the, the base product, um, I think it's a better and easier ask. Um, and so I, I predict that this is kind of how they'll be doing these kits moving forward. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, the biggest surprise for me is that they're supporting it still. I mean, that after the initial wave, they've done, this is the second extra. <clears throat> Excuse me. So go ahead. Well, and I, I, I don't have any, uh, I don't have like an article in front of me or anything, but I did see some headlines on like, you know, YouTube videos and stuff, even mentioning like Labo selling out, like the full kit at my Best Buy wasn't even available. I bought the last Labo in, in the store, uh, as far as the, the VR kit. And so I was, you know, I was, I was a little, a little bit surprised, but I mean, overall, I, I, I'm look the other stuff I said, we never touched it again. I'll throw my switch back in this. I'll check it out. My son had to check it out. Like everybody in the household had to check it out. Right. So, yeah. and, and I, I think most people listen, no, but my, uh, my youngest is 11 and then they go all the way up to 18. And so a lot of times they don't really like, they're just kind of playing Fortnite or the division or, you know, my daughters are playing Sims or animal crossing or things like that. And so sure. um, <laughs> that's just kind of what they're into. But, uh, so, you know, I I think it's I, I I think it's good. I'm glad to see it's back. But uh, I think that's gonna do it for uh, for their news. Let's uh, let's we're gonna we're gonna get to know Steve a little bit here. Oh boy! Here we go! All right. So Steve, what's uh, what's your history with Nintendo? It is long because <laughs> I am old. Um, but so I have been uh, a slave to Nintendo since I was uh, like eight or nine, I think. Um, the, the the story that I tell all the time is, um, and I've told it on all of my other podcasts, is um, I always wanted a Nintendo. Um, we didn't have a lot of money, so I you know I played it with my neighbors, and um, eventually I, I conned my parents into being like, hey, listen, it's for me, it's for you know little Mikey, my brother, um, it would be a great way for us to have, you know, family time and brother time. And so they, they bought it. Um, and I will never forget they, you know, my mom, you know, they surprised us. My mom brought me and my brother down into the living room. Um, and they set it up in their, in their bedroom. Cause that was like the smart thing to do back in the eighties, put the video game in your bed in the parents' bedroom. So the kids didn't play it forever. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> as, as we, as modern parents know, really all that does is make them make us torment them to wake up um so that didn't last very long but so she brought us down to the living room my brother and i were like what's going on this is just so weird and then they brought us up and my dad was playing duck hunt with the zapper and he was just doing the zapper thing and my mom was transfixed she was just like oh my goodness this is crazy um and eventually i was like okay we played can i play super mario and my mom had no idea what it was. And because um, that, that was it, that was a period of time where it was possible to not know who Mario was. Mm -hmm. um, and so she had no idea what it was. And um, it, so she looked at my dad and was like, is it safe? Like, is it OK for him to play? Um, and my dad said yes. And um, I still remember that conversation. And that's kind of what inspired me to do my website is because ever since I was like eight, I've been trying to remind parents that video games are in general safe and okay. Um, and kind of showing them what game, what these games are about. So that's how it started. We got, and after that, it was an avalanche. We got the SNES, this, the, the Christmas after it came out, the N64. Um, and I say it to my wife all the time, like when they announced the Switch, um, 
like before the switch was fully announced and we had any idea what it was um i looked at it and i was like listen if they announce that it's just a new toaster we're buying that toaster so like it doesn't really matter what it is (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play it we're gonna own it um and it turned out to be the switch which is a pretty amazing system by itself um and it came with breath of the wild which is my probably my favorite game of all time oh wow Wow. Okay. Okay. So uh, the the next question on the list is favorite console. Is it the Switch? No. My my favorite console is the Super Nintendo. Okay. Um, it, I mean, it really just comes down to I just have so many really wonderful memories of playing with that. Sure. Um, my you know my brother and I we would get Nintendo Power magazine and we would pour through it. My birthday was in November. We had Christmas and his birthday was in March. And so we got like three games a year. So I remember like throughout the SNES era, you know, very carefully weighing all of our options. Um, And man, (laughs) so many awesome Christmas breaks or summer vacations or where we would sit down, you know, Final Fantasy two and three. And um, the the games that I played on Super Nintendo um, determined what kind of gamer I became. Right, like they proved, I like role playing games. I love platformers because of Super Metroid and Super uh, Super Mario World. That's the the so even if newer consoles like the Switch, etc., have you know different bells and whistles, um, the the SNES is responsible for who I am. Got it, got it. So then the next question: favorite games or series? Okay, I can do that. Um, so. Uh, my favorite series is Final Fantasy. Oh. Um, I'm a huge RPG dork. Um, I, you know, I LARP, <laughs> right? Like that's 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 the level of dork I get into. So, <laughs> but Final Fantasy, man, there's something about that franchise that just gets me so hype. Um, and it all came back to Final Fantasy II that I got on, you know, my, um, you know, on the SNES. Mm-hmm. You know, we brought it home, and I just. You know, there was something about like that epic sweeping story and it continues, you know, and even though, you know, 15 wasn't super great, like it was still amazing for me because it was a Final Fantasy game um, and being able to show that to my kids. Uh, my favorite game in that series is 10, which is it's cool that we're recording today because that just came out for Switch today. Right. Um, so, but yeah, I'm I, I, 10 is my favorite in that whole franchise. Um I know people will argue with me about whether it is quote unquote the best and I don't really have any logical argument. Um, but it Final Fantasy X is my favorite. I'll play that game. Um, anytime I am sad or upset, um, I will just turn on Final Fantasy X and that music just brings me back. Um, and we actually used to play the, the hymn of the faith to uh, calm my oldest son down when he cried. Hmm. Um, and it, it worked like that. That's cool. That's cool. So what would you say is your favorite Nintendo memory? Is it the one where you got your NES or is there, is there another? I mean, I think the, the one where I got the NES, the most important memory is it kind of shaped my future. Um, but I think my, my favorite Nintendo memory, um, man, there've been so many really good ones. Um, but you know what? My, the one that I really love the most that's kind of resonating with me right now while I think about it has really been sharing Breath of the Wild with my two sons. Mm. They're 13 and 10. Um, and all three of us have been playing that game. Um, you know, I've finished it. Um, well, no, I didn't finish it. I rolled credits on it. You, how do, I don't know if anyone actually finishes that. Um, and my oldest son has as well. My younger son um, is actually, he hasn't finished the main game, but he's actually playing the master mode. <laughs> Um, and, um, just sharing the game with them and talking about it and you just kind of checking in on them whenever they start playing it. And those are some of my great memories because it's, they're kind of experiencing that game the same way that I experience things like link to the past and things like that. So that, that, those are my big memories right now. Got it. Got it. Here's this one of our favorite questions. What's a Nintendo game that you haven't played or haven't completed that we are going to judge you for? Oh, Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> Never was, even turned it on. That was way too quick. <laughs> Super Mario Sunshine, because because I'm I was ready for that question in one form or another. 
Um, yeah, Super Mario Sunshine is the game that I have. I've never. I have never touched the sticks on that game. Really? It came out at just the worst time. Um, I've been praying for them to do an HD remaster, mm-hmm. right? Like every time a Nintendo Direct comes up, like is now the time? Do I get to do this? And no. Um, I've also never finished uh, Majora's Mask, but I, I really struggle with the N64 Zelda games. I guess they are not my jam. I see. I see. Did you try Majora's Mask on the 3DS or anything? No, because um, I really didn't like Ocarina of Time on the 3DS. It's oh. just too small. That game, you really, you know, a game like that, I really want to just kind of kick back with the big screen. Um, and the 3DS, I pretty much, the, the, the 3DS was just a JRPG machine for me. Oh, okay. So anything remotely action oriented, I just couldn't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at games. Hmm. Um, that's my secret. I'm just the worst. Um, the only time I played Ocarina of Time is when I was helping my wife through parts that she was frustrated in. Got it. So I came to the rescue because I knew the, you know, that she got really stuck on some of the platforming in like the shadow temple. You know how you kind of got to walk off at just the right time with the floating boots. Yeah. She just hated her life through that. And so I had to do it because otherwise she was going to break her 3DS. Yeah, not good. So, not good. Yeah. Not good. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about your content, man. What what uh, what what kind of, of content do you create? So um, I run EngageFamilyGaming.com. Um, we are a website that uh, talks about games for families to jo- uh, for families to enjoy together. Um, so obviously, that's where Nintendo comes in because I uh, preach the power of Nintendo to bring families together, and have been doing so for at this point. Now that I think about it, almost seven years. It'll be seven years when E three starts. Wow. Um, but we uh, we talk about video games and board games, um, which is our. Uh, which is the board game piece is largely by accident. <laughs> Originally, we were just going to be a video game site, um, and the board game just kind of happened. Uh, when you get volunteer writers, you kind of just let them write what they want, and it turned out that that was uh, pretty good for traffic. Um, I do a bunch of live shows um, on Facebook. I know you were surprised when I told you that most of my content, video-wise, is done on Facebook, um, but that's just you know, when you're talking to parents, and grandparents and caregivers. That's where you go where the people are. Um, and so I do it on there. I have three live shows that I do every week. Uh, one is called the EFG show, where I talk about news and other you know cool stuff with my daughter who is six. Um, so we, we talk about, this week we're gonna talk about um, Reggie retiring and you know we're gonna talk about some of the same stuff we talked about today, um, only we're gonna uh, get the perspective of a six year old. Uh, so that's fun. Um, and I have this guy who I showed you before the show, but I'm going to show the audience because this is Ron. Um, this is my buddy, Ron. Um, he, uh, he tells jokes Got it. and, uh, this is uh, courtesy of think geek. Um, so if you guys are just listening, he's got a piranha plant puppet on his hand right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. This is, this is more for the Twitch chat. Um, and his name is Ron. You know, because Piranha, you get it. Because uh, yeah. I'm a dad. Yeah, um, I get it. Curious. Yeah. Um, courtesy of Think Geek. Um, <laughs> as soon as I told them that I didn't eat a show with my daughter, they were like, oh, well, you need a pop. So they went in the back and grabbed that for me when I was at PAX. Oh, um, that's great. And yes, uh, t- uh, Delmonic saying that the Piranha plant is dope. Yes, agreed. It is dope. <laughs> um, although I'm way too old to refer to anything as dope. Um, so, um, but other than that, we have a podcast. I actually do two podcasts on my own. One is engage a family gaming podcast that goes up weekly. We alternate between video games and board games, but I also do a a podcast during my commute to work called the EFG daily commute, uh, which is a 10 to 15 minute bite size thing where I'll talk about either a relevant piece of news and give my perspective on it. Or if there's nothing news wise to talk about, I'll just talk about a game. Um, you know, sometimes I give advice to content creators too, but most of the time it's whatever's on my mind when I leave Dunkin' Donuts in the morning. Got it. Do you know what Dunkin' Donuts is? I know you're from, you know, the West Coast. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, there actually used to be one in the town I live in. It now, it's now, uh, I believe it's called, uh, Dave's Donuts though. It it had gone out of business as Dunkin' Donuts and, uh, um, and so, but anyway, they've always got great, great. The problem is you can't, if you don't get there early enough, they always sell out. That's the, that's the problem. Yeah. You know? 
I assume that that's the way it works. I, I go there early and I have about a half hour, 45 minute commute. So rather than waste that half hour, I mean, I consume media during that time. So that's when I listen to podcasts, but rather than just consume, I think, you know what, if I'm going to be stuck in traffic, I may as well do something. Um, and so I created it and it's actually doing pretty well and I'm enjoying it. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Well, Hey, where, uh, I know you just kind of, you just kind of mentioned some of the stuff, but where, where can people, uh, find you and connect with you? Sure. So the best way to do it is if you have a Facebook is to like us on Facebook. So just go to engage family gaming.com slash Facebook or facebook.com slash engage family gaming. We also have a community. Um, it's about 300 people strong of a bunch of parents who love to talk about games. Um, and that's just go to engage family gaming.com slash community. You can go there. If you want to talk to me on Twitter, you can either talk to our brand, which is uh, at EF Gaming, so E F G A M I N G, or you can talk to me, and it's Dutes Mania, um, and I'll put that in the chat later. Cool. Um, we're on Instagram, we're everywhere, really, but those are the big places to to talk to us. Got it, got it. Well, hey man, thanks so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. I can't. I mean, you'll have to come on my show at some point. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys. Well, hey, if you would like to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, uh, YouTube, Twitch, all the places, it's at N64Josh. Um, I do want to let you guys know we've been playing a ton of Mario Kart, and I just finished up a uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Guide. It's on N64Josh.com right now. You can go check that out. I'm kind of regretting putting it out there because everybody seemed to get better. Uh you know, right after, right after this thing went out. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's in chat right there. If you guys want to be able to check it out. And, uh, so that, that it's been fun though. We've had a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun playing Mario Kart. Uh, you can follow the show at N powercast. The show notes are available at N 64 josh.com slash NPC one ninety nine guys. This Thursday is episode 200. Hate zero is going to be joining me. And there are going to be some special announcements. The show is going to be recorded later than normal. Okay, it's going to be at probably 6.30 Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 Eastern. All right, but it's going to be exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, like I said, there are some announcements uh, going to be coming your way on, on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. If you want to email the show, npc at n64josh.com. If you would like to get a free book from Audible, go to audibletrial.com slash NPC. The chair I'm sitting in from OPC, n64josh.com slash OPC, automatically saves you $10 at checkout if you want to pick up your own gaming chair. Patreon.com slash n64josh is where you can help support the content I create. And uh, if you want to pick up some merch, go to n64josh.com slash store. We do have a Discord and 64 joshcom slash discord. Lots of great gamers in there to talk, you know, games, play games. It's a good time. And there is a Facebook group as well. And 64 joshcom slash Facebook group. If you can rate and review on iTunes, we appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Bye.